I had a nightmare when I was a little kid and my mom knew that I liked to draw a lot, so she asked me to draw what was in my nightmare. She uh, had me bring it to the fireplace and lit the fire and I, I threw it in there and I never had that nightmare again. So ever since then, I guess it just stuck in my head and I just, I'm obsessed with it. Realty Haven is actually a real estate brokerage firm. We originally started as a operations company for large scale investors. So we would help them acquire single family homes and turn them into rental properties. As of lately, we have just pivoted our model to go towards starting a nonprofit, which is Haven Home, that we can also buy single family homes and turn them into rentals, but we want to offer them at affordable levels because of the inflation that we've seen in the market. So the mural on the outside of the building ties into everything that we do here. It was really intended to be a light in kind of dark times, and we wanted to be able to show our love for all of the people that make up our communities and love for people that have made impacts on our individual lives as well. Right now I'm working on my grandfather. They retired him as a Brigadier General. He's actually the son of Emily Douglas, who they named the park after and he became the postmaster of Columbia, retired as Grand Billy, loved and adored by the entire community. I haven't seen any representations of uh, South Carolina, or many of the South for that matter, uh, that ring true to, uh, to the way I see it. People don't realize how culturally diverse it is down here. You know, when I go up north and I go to uh, different cities, unless you're in a large city, it's predominantly white. I miss black people and Latino culture, and you know, I miss um, all this stuff when I'm when I'm on the road. I really love the idea of portraits. Um, we had gone down to Windwood Walls and kind of fell in love with that in Miami, uh, the art scene down there. And McClellan's art that we had seen samples of was really something that I connected with. What I decided to do was make the mural um, match the sunset and the sunrise. I bring in the crew. We uh, strip the walls down, prime it, and you know, then we start with the mural work. We decided to put the black people up first. Right now, it's so charged and they seem to be needing uh, representation. McClellan had been talking to me about what he wanted to do. And he was uh, saying that he thought this was a big thing for the city, but also too for the area, uh, Rosewood area. And I thought to myself, he's right about that. I do believe this piece turns a lot of heads. Uh, McClellan chose to use some really bright colors, catches people's eyes. He's also chose to use different individuals. Um, he used me to start the whole thing off. I mean, hey, and I'm wearing a black hat. I'm looking like a superhero on the side of a wall, but also, too, everybody else who's on the wall looks like a superhero. I had a feeling, you know, it might trigger somebody, and I, and I had a bunch of people drive by, and they thought it was uh, George Floyd. I, I mean, it, it's sad, but I mean, just putting a black person on a wall has become so charged that uh, somebody decided to deface it and put something really terrible on it. Um, honestly, it didn't surprise me. Black Lives Matter! The time in which the mural first began, it definitely was in the heat of the moment where everything was taking place around the country and actually around the world. And um, though the Rosewood area is definitely an area that's progressive, um, I just still expected it to happen because the tensions are very high right now. You do your best to navigate it, and in some cases, you have to face it head on. You find ways to help you and assist you in dealing with these things, and it's definitely not an easy issue to deal with, and it's definitely not an issue that's gonna be going away any, anytime soon. I've had a couple people drive by and you know yell, make America great again, and stuff like that. Whatever your political views, it's, it, you know, it's, it's weird to me that, that this, something that's meant to be inclusive um, can be seen by some people to be uh, uh, such a divisive act. That pretty much set everything in motion for all the attention that the work needed. So they unknowingly did something positive 
for this project. <laughs> Feels great, it's satisfying, to say the least. We've had a lot of really great out love and support from everybody that's here. Um, people coming by, taking photos uh, with the artwork, leaving us wonderful messages on social media. This was a lot more important than even I had, um, you know, originally thought. And uh, so we decided to make sure that everybody's represented. And I thought acknowledging the Native Americans, especially in their home state, would be very impactful. And the Catawba tribe is the only recognized tribe in the state of South Carolina. And John George was their last living medicine man who just passed away this year. And so we wanted to get that as a tribute to them. It's basically been a mishmash of what looks good and also adds to the diversity of the mural. So every time we drive past the building, it's a reminder of how blessed we are and how far we've come from Luna's condition. Two days after her second birthday, she had an arteriovenous malformation that ruptured. Uh, essentially, she just had a stroke and lost the use of her right side. And we were in the hospital for 11 weeks. She went through three brain surgeries, and she's just such a miracle. Now she's about two and a half, and she's already regained the use of her right side. She's walking, she's moving her arm, she's talking again. Every time we drive by, she says, it's me, Luna, and it's just the cutest thing ever. I hope in the future she can bring her kids to see it one day. Seeing my mom's picture on the side of the building was humbling, to say the least, and if you knew the background of my mother and, and all that she's gone through to be who she is today, you wouldn't be surprised that she's on the building as well. Where do we even begin? Um, so somebody who lost her parents when she was nine and then came here because of the Korean War and all the pain that she's gone through and some of the experiences that she's gone through and losing family to the North Korean side. And if you met her today, you'd realize, you know, that's a really strong woman inside of a tiny, humble, meek shell. Yet the strong woman is representing a lot of people inside of the building. I mean, there's a pretty large ethnic community here. And so I think representation certainly does help and help acknowledge that they, they're here and they're making an impact in the community as well. I mean, people just stop by every day and they, you know, they tell me, you know, we, we thank you so much, but I'm just like, you know, I'm just trying to make something pretty for everybody, you know, but I, I didn't expect it to be such an event. I mean, I think it's something that we needed. You know, people are having a really hard time. If I can do something to brighten up their day, it's, it's you know, special. <laughs>